ีกันอยู่ตอนนั้นไอ้ฟีลไลค์ไอ้มีเกลียดอะไรทุลบิดกับพระเจ้ามาร์พราะว่าบางทีในเมษายนเขาให้ผมเข้าไปหาเขาและฉันไม่สามารถพูดกับเขาได้ดังนั้นตอนนั้นผมไม่สามารถพูดกับเขาได้ดังนั้นตอนนั้นผมไม่สามารถพูดกับเขาได้ดังนั้นตอนนั้นผมไม่สามารถพูดกับเขาได้ดังนั้นตอนนั้นผมไม่สามารถพูดกับเขาได้ดังนั้นตอนนั้นผมไม่สามารถพูดกับเขาได้ดังนั้นตอนนั้นผมไม่สามารถพูดกับเขาได้ Down to the parking lot, so that we could upload the sanitizers and disinfectants to the vehicles for delivery to different barangays and towns. And it was in that moment that Father Mar uh, called me, and I had to excuse myself, and I told him that I would just call him back. But the calling back did not happen because I forgot. Until after some kind of uh, two weeks later, that he called again. And that time, we were able to talk properly and longer over the phone. He was just curious about what was happening here in the university, how we were uh, coping, and also he told me that he would be sending me some documents. And I told him, of course, I would welcome anything that he would send. The documents came, but several months later, I think sometime in October, because of the travel restrictions, and. Upon receiving the documents, I was thinking of calling him back for confirmation, just to tell him that I have received what he sent. But again, the calling did not materialize until sometime last week, when Father Roger came to our community here. He just arrived from Bohol, and he told us news about conference in Bohol and specifically about Father Mar. And then I said, "Oh, I was actually about to supposed to talk to Father Mar." So I will call him tomorrow. The following day, before I could even manage to call him, I received the news that Father Mar was no more; that he already breathed his last. And then, right away, the song, the favorite song of Father Direct, came to my mind: "If tomorrow never comes," because indeed, the tomorrow that I was thinking of. To call Father Mar did not come. Father Mar died at the age of 92, if I'm not mistaken, because uh, when I came here in in San Carlos in 2018, that was the year that he also celebrated his 90th birthday. I would remember that one very well because uh, I tried to produce a kind of video slides for him. For his friends, because there were some invited guests. Of course, the showing did not happen because we did we had some kind of technical problems. But just the same, even yesterday, was watching the video that uh, I tried to make for him. So he's he, he died at the age of 92, and I don't think most of us would ever reach that age. I don't know with Father Philip. I think Father Philip is very hopeful to reach that age. But I would invite him to come to Talamban because life here would be longer if you are staying in Talamban. <laughs> And of course, some time ago, Father Philip presented a data to us SVDs about the average age of confers uh, upon reaching death. What's what the average age, Father Philip? Sixty something? Sixty-three? Oh. The average age. So those who are 60 years old here, alam na this. I think one of the drawbacks, if you can call it drawback, of dying very old, if at all we are able to do that or reach that old age, is that most of our age mates, most of our friends, our colleagues, or confers belong to our age bracket. Would have long dead already, or will have been long dead already by the time we die. So that when it comes to telling stories, there would be no more stories about your childhood years, or years of your youth, or when you were still in the seminary, because those people who could tell stories about those moments are no longer around. And that kind of thing is what we are having here. 
so that when we try to recall moments with Father Mar, I would say those were moments when he was already, what, 50 years old? 60, 70, 80. But what about the Father Mar in his younger days, in his younger years? How was he like? I took the liberty of kind of digging something into the past of Father Mar by reading his uh, manuscript here, which he wrote, Random Recollections, covering years 1935 to 1980 of SVDs in USC. I'm not going to read the whole manuscript because it's 38 pages long, but I would encourage our conference SVDs to read this manuscript. I can make this one available for photocopy. Uh, you can get this one from Mom Odette, but I think this, is, this should be a must, must, read, must read for all SVDs in USC because of the important data here that we can get. Allow me to highlight some of the aspects here, some of the parts of this manuscript which somehow are telling us something about Father Mar. And on page two, for example, he said, he, he narrated the first time that he met the first SVD in his life. And he said, the first SVD with whom I had a remote acquaintance was Father Bonk. This is how it happened. Sometime in November or December 1943, he was asked to solemnize the marriage ceremony of a guerrilla army officer at that time, Captain or Major Samson Sabalones, at the town church of Talibon. While I was sitting at a rice field shed, rustling and co a contraption to show off the flock of Mayas, so he was in the rice field, from the ripening rice field in the barrio Patong along the Taliban Hitafe Road, I saw a white man walking in full white cassock with a cincture. A white buntal hat covered his head. He walked deliberately and I could see he was suffering from the heat because even at a distance of about 150 meters, I noticed his face flushing red. Then he continued by saying, much later I knew that when the Japanese made a final total mopping operation in Bohol in May 1944, Father Bonk was caught together with others. He died in prison, this SVD priest. But we can highlight perhaps the experience of Father Mar here. The first time that he met an SVD, maybe that was the start of his journey in the society. In fact, he entered the society uh, seminary, Christ Digging Seminary, at the age of 19 or 20 years old, not very clear, in 1948. He finished his theology in 1957 and was ordained in, 19, in the same year, 1957. The following year, he was uh, asked to come to San Carlos, 1958. And we could wonder what was, how was the initial days of Father Mar in San Carlos. Maybe we can again read something here. And here are her words. The first batch of SVD post-war class of five was ordained in December 21, 1957. Among them was myself. My hope for a mission assignment to Indonesia was not realized as my classmate, Father Ben Prado, SVD, was the one sent as the third Filipino missionary to Indonesia. So I think Father Mar had the longing to go to foreign mission, especially Indonesia, but that was not possible for him because there were only five of them in the class and one of his classmates was the one assigned there. And so while he was in San Carlos, he said, Instead of studying and specializing in Philippine history, which I wanted to do, I was asked by the rector to take up physics. Actually, I had some inclinations to science and mathematics, and mathematics was also one of my favorite subjects. So in the end, he was able to uh, 
study BS Physics. He, he graduated, but his postgraduate uh, studies were on uh, communication. After staying in USC for some time, he was sent to NEME for cor a course, and then in the US for three years study, and then he came back to the USC as uh, Vice President for Administration from 1970 to 1970, 1971 to 1975, then 75 to 79, he was the president of the university. In this manuscript, he did not say much about his experience as the president. He was kind of maybe trying to become, to be very modest, and he was not making a, a kind of reference really of himself uh, during when he was the, the president during his administration. But before his, his election as VP for administration, he, he played a very critical role in the preparation of uh, the program for the inauguration and investiture of the first Filipino president at that time. Uh, his name was Father Castillo. And these are again the words of Father Mar when he was organizing the event. As one of as the one responsible for the preparation and the event of the inauguration, I admit that I modeled the inaugural preparation and ceremony after the Harvard ceremony with just some additional religious significance. I was able to do this because in the centenary celebration and inauguration of a Harvard president sometime in 1968, Father Koch, another SVD, brought back with him a handful of ceremonial information and documents used during the celebration when he represented the University of San Carlos in Harvard. Again, telling us, giving us a glimpse of the kind of task that Father Mar was doing when he was still in USC and while he was still very young. So fast forward, in the middle of 1978, towards the end of his term as the president, he said, I came to be confirmed that my term would end in March 1979. The general visitator who came sometime early in that year hinted to me that a search for a president with a doctorate degree was being proposed. Even with this forewarning, I proceeded to, to plan and design with Mr. Alcoseba, the placement of the proposed buildings in the Talamban campus. Maybe we can make some associations again. In fact, if you read more in this manuscript, Father Mar was saying that the original plan for this campus was not really followed. It was kind of modified and, and the locations of the buildings were uh, uh, eventually changed. So to, to end somehow his narrative in this manuscript, he said, and I think this is where we need to come in as younger SVDs. In his words, so I pass on to the younger generation of SVDs in USC, the torch of enthusiasm for memories that will help light the path of those who will continue the SVDs involvements and achievements in the unfolding life events of the University of San Carlos. As a Catholic educational institution, ever pursuing its mission of Catholic educational excellence down the succeeding years, molding minds and hearts of its students to live its motto, Scientia Virtus et Devotio, in the real challenging world. Once again, I would say, again, one of the drawbacks of dying old is that we don't have people who could tell us many things, many uh, information about us when we were still younger. There would be no seminary classmates to tell us how we were like in the seminary. That particular moment, for example, when we said, I love you, brothers, or that experience when you were confronted by your prefect. But I think those are part of our memories, and we have, each one of us has its own uh, kind of experience to share. But beyond sharing, really, is a special bond between us. 
We know that Father Mar belongs to another generation, an older generation of converts. In fact, during lunchtime today with Father Ulik, he told me that for some time in USC, when Father Mar was still a very young priest, he was the only Filipino in the community. And yet he, he, he survived and he thrived, and he really did well. And maybe this is the same thing, the same challenge for us, that coming now to the younger generation after so many years, we need to take up the responsibility handed over to us by Father Mar. Each time a confer, a friend, a loved one, or a colleague passes on to the next life, the torch of life is handed over to us who are being left behind, regardless of our age or experience, because we, are, we share the same bond in life and in death. This is the kind of bond that should give us comfort, especially in relation to today's gospel reading when Jesus is telling us, come to me and you shall find rest. In this bond, we find rest in the knowledge that Father Mar is now going and returning to the bosom of the Father. We pray for his soul so that we too shall receive blessings from the Lord as we continue the journey of being missionaries started and being uh, propagated by Father Mark.